Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Tuesday, and we're yeah. doing a movie review. Yeah. More Universal movies. Yeah. This is one that um, I had actually been wanting to see for a long time. I don't think I actually saw this one when I was younger, unlike most of the other Universal movies. But it was one that I uh, kept hearing about, because honestly, I think it was lost for a long time. You know what I mean? I or, the, or at least they thought it was lost. <laughs> no, I mean like it, yeah. it like it was damaged or something damaged yeah. or something like that. So they didn't like actually refine it until like later on. And um, you know, and it was actually like really influential on a bunch of other uh, movies going forward. So I'd been wanting to see it for a really long time. And, and then I think Shudder added it for a while, although we watched it on um Tubi, wouldn't it? Tubi. I think yeah, it was. Yeah. You can watch it on there for, for free. free. It's a short movie, about an hour or something. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's only like an hour and twelve minutes or something like that. This movie here was frustrating because it was the atmosphere and it was really good. It looked the, the sets looked great. This is just right after Frankenstein, and um, it looked like a high end horror movie from the thirties, which it may have been a high end movie. It had good atmosphere. The story was actually pretty good, but then the movie just kind of ends. You know, not much is really resolved. There was all these little mysteries built up, but they never really answered them. And it's just some people, their car gets stuck in a damn landslide out in the middle of somewhere. It's in Wales, actually. Out in honky motherland. All right. I mean, it's not actually in Wales. They yeah. actually shot it on a back lot, but it's yeah. supposed to be Wales. <laughs> so they end up in this spooky ass castle with uh, this old lady and her brother who's you know he's like old queen that's and the same guy that played dr pretorius in bride of frankenstein that's the same actor okay yeah, yeah. he did, he he does a good job in it and then it, okay it's kind of like a fall of the house of usher or the house you know from edgar Allan yeah Poe. that's what when i'm watching this movie that's what i thought it was about an evil family they never really get into the evil of what exactly happened uh, they're, one of their relatives is locked up and he's kind of like the devil he's a murderer he gets out their their butler is like is, is played by Boris Karloff with a beard and he's kind of like Lurch and gets drunk and tries to molest all the women just follow him around you know yeah big time molesting and, lots yeah. of molesting going and on it's, in this it's, <laughs> it's, it kind of sucks because Karloff could act his fucking ass off you know if you if you, if you you want to see the mummy? That's fucking Carlos' fucking bad, most badass monster movie, where he actually plays a role, and it's a lot like Dracula, you know. Uh, he plays this old Egyptian sorcerer, but in this one, he's just Frankenstein with a beard, basically. Uh, well, this was only a year after yeah. Frankenstein, and it's the same director. This is James Whale. In yeah. case you guys don't know, this is the movie that he made between Frankenstein and The Invisible Man. Like, The Invisible yeah. Man came out the year after this. It's kind of a shit role for him. He just fucking walks around and throws things. Uh, he, he doesn't really say much. He's dumb. He, uh, they say Mute, he's dumb. Yeah. Mute. He can't, he can't fucking speak. Stupid. He sh he actually should have been one of the brothers, like the main brother. That way, they could have highlighted his acting skill. You know, fucking Karloff could act. It was just kind of waste of, 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 of the... Man, it's just it's frustrating just because the way the story was written, it's definitely like something's missing. It's like something. It got did cut kind out. of because I was really into it. Now yeah. don't like go into it thinking it's like a horror horror movie. It's actually like a black comedy. It's more like a comedy, yeah. like horror comedy. And it's not supernatural, like there's no mm. monsters or anything like that. Um, but there's like such great build up, like you said, and there's yeah. like a lot of kind of funny shit in yeah, there. Yeah, it's like it's it's rocking, it's going last. This is a pretty good movie. Go ahead. Go but ahead. then it but then yeah. it just kind of like Like it fizzled. Yeah, the end of it kind of fizzled out. Like, and I'm it? not sure, yeah. like, when we were watching it, yeah. you know, when I read later, I don't think anybody specifically said this, but they said, oh, you know, it was lost for a long time or, like, the first reel was damaged or something like that. And I was just kind of like, well, maybe they had to cobble it together and, like, maybe... Because it definitely felt like something was missing from the end, but I'm not really sure. 
And I, the thing about it, this was pre-code, okay? And, like, you can tell that, like, in some of the characters, like, particularly the one of the characters who's a chorus girl, but they make it pretty obvious that she's, like, a prostitute, like, pretty much. Well, I think that was kind of one of the same back Well, I know day. that, but it's, like, yeah. they didn't actually use that word, but yeah. she does, like, straight up say, you know, um, I give him money, and, like, you know what that means, right? Or something yeah. like that. Like, she says some, something like that. So it's clear that that's supposed to be, like, what she is. Yeah. yeah. But, um, so there's that kind of stuff going on in there like some of the stuff for the 30s is like pretty scandalous but um that's i kind of feel like a lot of the stuff about like this cursed family or what was going on with them was kind of like implied more than stated outright yeah i i don't know they imply well there, there's an accusation that they killed one of the sisters right and rachel i think rachel, her name and was. they hid it you never see this it's just that the guy that they have locked up claims that it happened, but he's evil, so it probably didn't happen. Or, but you know, you don't know. He gets out and he tries to burn the whole place down, and which is funny because dude probably weighs fucking ninety five pounds. He looks like he's about five foot tall. Who's the guy that plays Saul? Yeah, he's, the pyromaniac. Yeah, he's he's a tiny little dude. <laughs> he is very very small. He looks like a little fucking. But I said he well he has crazy strength because yeah. he's insane. He's like a little leprechaun running around trying to set fire to the curtains. <laughs> and, <laughs> well, he succeeds in setting fire yeah. to the curtains at one point. <laughs> yeah, and then you, you meet the patriarch, and he's up in his ma master bedroom. Laying up on this huge bed, and it's a woman. You can tell it's a woman that they yeah. put a beard on. Yeah, it's Creepy. weird. It, it's and she was in like a lot of other movies, but they credited her as um, as John, whatever her. I can't remember what her real last name was, but like she wasn't actually a well known actress. Yeah. So I think, like I said, this had like same Mango just brought up that this had a lot of the same kind of humor that Bride of Frankenstein had, and like yeah. I said, it was it was James Whale, yeah. and a lot of his stuff had a real camp like sensibility yeah. to it because he was like an openly gay man like you know there's the, a lot of gay stuff in this there is me. yeah there is yeah. well yeah, to be honest there yeah. was a lot of that in old Hollywood movies yeah. it's just that they couldn't state the shit outright yeah. they had to be like kind of a little bit on the down low about it you but had to be an adult of the era to understand it you, was implied but, right and like and I think they knew what they were looking at yeah, most of the time I, I think they knew what it was back then a lot of people re don't realize that the 1920s man They've rewritten history. These kids run around. They, they've rewritten history so many times. The 1920s, especially the baby boomers. The baby boomers want to th think that they're responsible for everything that they fixed the world. And they brought out the sexual Man, the sexual revolution happened in the 1920s. They just don't want to say that. The Roaring Twenties is when the sexual revolution happened, and it wasn't the first one. And not in America. The first one was like in the 1770s. Well, like we you said know, before, it's always like it's cyclical. It's a cycle, yeah. So, you know, they were doing all kinds of shit, you know? Shit that you would think that they didn't do back then? Yeah, they were doing it back then. Yeah, and, uh, but it's a good movie. Uh, if you're an adult and you read it, read in between the lines, you know more about what they're talking about. The brother, you know, he's definitely, uh, he's a queer character. Um, he, yeah. He, he's gay. Um, and they don't, re the, the, his sister is, uh, they never really say what her problem is. She's just kind of mean and deaf. Is she just what? mean? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, Every, she watches Gloria Stewart take like get. She doesn't get yes, naked, but because somebody tried, said, yeah, she must have been a lesbian. Cause, yeah, Mango said Gloria Stewart looks great in her nightwear. Yeah, she does. Yeah, yeah, she's hot. Did there's you two hotties in this? There are yeah. yeah there's, there's like there's, there's hot ladies in this. Yeah, um, and I think the old lady must have been a lesbian. Oh, they, they implied that, and then. The dad, I, are they implying that the dad was tr was was a transvestite or a transsexual? That could be because there had to be some reason. I don't like know because they very specifically say that that's a man, that's a male character, like the patriarch. But then when you go up there, yeah. like yeah, the, like she has a beard, but she's talking in her regular voice, a which is a voice very him. which is a woman's voice. Yeah. So it doesn't seem like they're trying to be like, oh, won't this... So it's like, I'm not really sure, like, what... I think, I think that the whole implication was that this whole family is degenerate or cursed yeah. or something like that. So they were just trying to make them seem other, yeah. I guess. Well, like you said, the director was gay. Yeah. So 
I think he's just talking about coming from a, a, an unusual family, kind of like the Munsters or the Adams family. Uh, this is not the family that fits on the block. This is kind of like an ostracized family that's n not really fitting in. They're gothed out. For, like fucking girl. Yeah, they're like that, the Adams family. Yeah, like, kind of like the Adams family. <laughs> and they're, they're like just, they're all weirdos of one stripe or another. Yeah, and it said that the it said that the patriarch up there, who's to me I, is seems transsexual to me, um, that he had these wild parties with these people that would come over. So what the fuck are we talking about here? You know what I mean? Is it orgies? Are we talking about just places like mannequins where we hang out? You know, it, it's. It, they're just saying they're just they were partying hard, all right, and it must have been sexual type stuff, you know. I would I thought that was Sexy the implication parties. because right, like yeah. the old woman, the deaf old woman, just yeah. kept talking about like sin and sin, this yeah, and that yeah, and the yeah, other she's thing. She's regretting it, I guess. So well, either no, they that or let her go. They that's let, what I mean. They or kept she, her ass locked up or something. Yeah, because it's yeah. like, well, she was like bumming everyone out, man. Yeah, like she yeah, was probably yeah, like right. no fun. Yeah. So they're like, well, why don't you just like stay in your room then, and we'll yeah. just like have fun and party down here. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, all that. But I guess, like I said, I guess the implication. But the weird thing about it though is that when they finally meet the patriarch of the family, who's like 102, they say he's 102, right? Yeah. He seems like ni like a nice person. Like he doesn't seem yeah. like no. He's, he's a good guy. The only really bad person is Saul. Yeah, he's threatening to burn it all down. Who's gonna burn it all down? Right. But he's clearly just like crazy. He's and crazy. evil and shit. And then uh, and the Boris Karloff character, yeah. he's um, you know, he's kind of like evil too but really only when he drinks they said he he gets drunk yeah. and then he lets saul out of his room because they keep saul locked yeah. up because otherwise he'll burn the whole shit down yeah because he crazy i think like it's that. the adams family type thing it's it yeah it's it does it seem very much and, and, now this was based on a novel the novel was actually called benighted and it came out in 1927 so like you know five years before this movie by yeah. jb Priestley. and i think as far as I know, like, there's not much of a synopsis about the novel, like, on Wikipedia. But the movie was, like, a pretty faithful adaptation of the story. Um, but I don't think it was as funny. Like, I think the comedy yeah. was more, like, added in the movie version. But the book is kind of more like, because J.B. Priestley was, like, a British writer. So I guess it was kind of more like a like a parody of, like, the English class system. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, which there's a little bit of that in this, but I don't think it comes across as much as maybe it would to like a British audience, perhaps. You know, uh, I, yeah. I'm not entirely sure about that. To me, I just, I, I just figured, you know, it was, it was like the Adams family in the House of Usher, and it's just the um, people that evidently mainstream society would consider to be degenerate. Uh, but they're just people, you know. <laughs> and then they got one one family member who's going to try to burn it all down. The normies show up and say, "Hey, the landslide! This might knock this place down." And then the the, the gay dude says, "Oh no! This this uh, this castle is built on a foundation of rock. So families like this are going to be around forever." <laughs> I think is what what that implied. Um, it was an interesting movie. It's just that it didn't have a good enough ending. Yeah, it needed more of a punchy that, ending, yeah, I feel that, like. I, I re actually really liked it up till then. Yeah, the ending was disappointing. You're like, wait a minute, hold on. This whole movie's just about that? You know, that yeah, I was, I was kind of expecting like a little yeah. bit more, I think. Yeah. It that's, had, that's all it was. And then certain plot twists should have been given to us, and then, like, you know, shit resolved. And I, I, th I think it was a, uh, I think it was a statement. It was, a, I think it was a gay statement. Basically, I think we're not gay. We call it kind of like alternative sexuality statement. I think is the whole movie was. I think. Yeah, that's how I picked it up. You got the lecherous drunk who tries to molest the women. You got the old gay waspy guy who never hooked up with you know with it with a family. And he was like fr afraid of everything. Afraid like he doesn't everything. want to go upstairs like to get the lamp. He's like wigging yeah. out about he was it. Too and making... weak to even carry the lamp. You had the uh, the gender bending patriarch. The deaf old lady who never got any. What but else? but they but that they kind of imply is maybe that she's she's lesbian probably. Well, because yeah, yeah she kind of goes in the room like because Gloria Stewart is going in there to like to change her into her, her dinner her clothes. clothes. Yeah. And I'm like, is that old bat just gonna like sit there on the bed and watch her? And I'm like, yeah. oh, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, I mean she, like I said, she didn't she get kind naked of assaulted or anything. Her a little bit. A little bit. And kind of came up on her and she's ah. Yeah, you know, so yeah, it was a little, it was a little weird. This is yeah. a, they're all a little, little gropey family. There was yeah. a little gropey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah, so somebody said um, that they heard that this was um, a uh, this this influenced the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and yes, oh, yeah, it yeah. did. Sure, uh, yeah. big time. I can see it. So yeah, I'm right. so I'm right. I'm picking up on. I picked up on the gay vibe. Yeah, this, so well, yeah. that's the thing. It's like because, yeah. like I said, there's like this old house. These people live here, and then on this same night, because there's this horrible storm and it causes kind of a landslide, so they have like actually two kind of sets of people that show up. You yeah. have like a. Norm. A, nor- a normie set and a wild set. Yeah, because like yeah, the yeah. first set is like a normie set. It's yeah, like yeah, a married yeah. couple, and uh, and shit. And then like you get Charles Lawton playing yeah. a guy named I think his name is Sir Porterhouse, like Sir William Porterhouse. Yeah. I'm like, oh, heir to the stake fortune. Yeah, I guess. And and, and he has a chorus girl girlfriend who like who later says because she actually ends up falling in love with um the other the, one of the normies with the guys. other guy with like Mel- I think the character played by melvin douglas yeah like they fall in love like immediately yeah but he's she... gonna marry her immediately her hook her ass yeah it's fucking funny and yeah. then all of a sudden there's this triangle that shows up it's these two girl two dudes try to kind of agreeing to share this girl to wear or to pass her off but they're all gonna be good friends type of shit didn't you pick that up on that shit what i don't know what you're talking about she said i'm gonna go with this guy we're gonna get married yeah but then the two dudes kind of friendship kind of Oh, okay, I get what you're saying. So it's like almost kind of like a... The two dudes were actually sitting, like, way close way to each other. Way too close to each other. It's, yeah, so, so it was, you know, you just got... <laughs> yeah, and they're just basically... Well, because, okay, so They were made, talking about, like, just kind of loose sexual... It's m- made mores. clear that Charles yeah. Lawton's character, Porterhouse, yeah. which I, every time they said his name, I just laughed. Porterhouse, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, well, I mean... Oh, yeah. fat boy. He's funny. He's really a good character. He's funny. Well, Charles Lawton is, like, super famous. Yeah. I think this is one of his first, because uh, he's a British actor, but I think yeah. this was one of his first American movies, but he was in a shit ton later. So um, so it's pretty clear that he's paying the girl, but not to have sex. She says, you know, he pays me, but he just, like, wants to talk and cuddle and shit. Like, he, yeah. like so he's one of those. Because I guess, didn't, didn't they say he had a wife that died? And so, yeah, like, he just that. has her, like, you know, there to... That's his uh, secretary. ...to comfort him or yeah, whatever. That's his secretary. So then, like, she falls in love with Melvin Douglas's character, and, um, you know, so Melvin Douglas, like, comes to Charles Lawton and is basically like, hey, I'm gonna take her off your hands, or I'm gonna marry her. Yeah. And then he's, like, okay with it, you know what I mean? Yeah, and then they become friends. And then they, like I but said, they, sitting off when they clothes. have that discussion... Yeah. Like, if you just saw that scene and, like, didn't yeah. really listen to the dialogue, even yeah. if you do listen to the dialogue, I'm like, are those two going to fuck? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know, they, they kind of looked like they were going to as I well. I think the message was, 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 hey, man, it's just sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can have her. You know, I was, you know, I, you know, she's not my girlfriend, really. I'm paying her. Yeah, because they did make it clear that they were yeah. that he was paying her. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so... I don't know. Like, I, one of the best things about this movie, like, the humor is pretty funny um, most of the time. Like, I really like, because um, somebody was saying, like, the character Ernest Thessinger, Thessinger um, is the guy that played, like, the, the brother, like, the, the old gay guy, who was also Dr. Pretorius in Bride of Frankenstein. And I think he was gay as well, like, in real life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And James Whale was, obviously. Uh, Slasher Fred said, if you guys ever see the Alfred Hitchcock classic, Rebecca... Thank you, Mango. Yeah, that's right. I meant th- meant to mention that Charles Lawton was married to Elsa Lanchester, who played mm. uh, Bride of Frankenstein. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. Another hottie. Yeah. Um, I think what the pro- I think what the deal was with this movie. Okay, you got a gay director. In this in these days, they really it would it would have been impolite, and it wouldn't have really been had mainstream acceptance for them to condone any kind of alternative lifestyle. So what you do is is you have a horror movie type situation where you kind of show these or you imply these these alternative lifestyle choices, right? You just kind of show them to the audience and there's some humor involved and some spooky shit happens, but it's never really quite condoned. So that way you could say, well, these are bad people. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you can wash your hands of it. But I think it was just, I think they were just sending the message out that, yeah, we know this exists, you know, and we know you guys are out there, you know, I think that's all it is. I mean, there was a lot of, like I said, you'd be surprised if you kind of like look back through the history of all the movies, because there have been an entire like, you know, fucking 
scholarly works and everything like books and stuff written on it yeah. about all of the you know coded queer characters that they had in movies back then a lot of the gangster movies had it in it yeah but like you couldn't come out and say Could it not, yeah. but like, everybody that was kind of i guess yeah. everybody kind of knew the score you know what i mean yeah. i think what was it little caesar actually had a bunch of kind of gay themes happening in it um remember that one that no, was the one it was, one. It was uh it was a gangster movie like a tiny gangster movie it kind of implies that that gangster was like uh bisexual which that would have made sense because clive barrel was and a lot of those guys from the roaring 20s were you know fucking because they were in and out of prison all the time and that was just part of their prison culture then you know and uh so it's kind of portrayed in the movies but they had to do it in a veiled manner yeah well, I've seen some uh, some critics speculate that the um, you know Doctor Frankenstein in the original Frankenstein movie was coded bisexual. Yeah, which okay. I could see that. How? I could, I could see. Do you that. remember? Do you remember what they pointed? I don't remember exactly, okay. but I'm just saying that that's something that a lot of people bring up. Well, Bride of Frankenstein is definitely <laughs> the, definitely these two dudes were this trying to make a damn AI sex bot. She well, and it's not even so much that. They're yeah, yeah. also trying to take over the process of birth. Like, they're right. trying to take it away from women because, like, they, they don't... homunculi and shit. Right. Like, they want to make some... Like, they can't, like, give birth to a human, so they're, like, trying to go about it, like, yeah. in a different way. So yeah. there's that kind of shit, too, which the, I think we brought up on The Bride of Frankenstein. The Bride had a heart of a hooker that came out of hook, and the brain was a synthetic brain made by the other guy. So yeah. It was AI. It was yeah. an AI sex bot. That's what they're talking about. Pretty much. Yeah. And, and she had to the bones of a 16-year-old and the best flesh that they could find. They're talking about a sex bot, man. Come on. Slasher Fred said, if you guys ever see the Alfred Hitchcock classic Rebecca, there is an implication that Mrs. Danvers was homosexual. Uh, and Mango said, yeah, Mrs. Danvers certainly has a thing for Rebecca. That's another movie. What, what, that what, what, what movie was that? Rebecca, the Alfred Hitchcock I didn't see it. movie. Um, it. Yeah, that's based on the Daphne yeah. du Maurier novel. We should probably do that one of these days because that's a classic. Yeah. Uh, Slash Fred said, since it's December, one of these days on your Wednesday show, you should do one of the classic ghost stories like A Christmas Carol. Yeah, maybe we could do that. I mean, I think the... Um, one of my favorite ones, which is the George C. Scott one, I think is free on YouTube at the moment. Uh, Mango also said J.B. Priestley, who wrote the book that The Old Dark House was based on, uh, wrote one of the greatest mystery detective stories ever, An Inspector Calls. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that, but I never read it. I highly recommend the 1945 film adaptation. Okay, well, I will have to look that up. I mean, the thing about it is that what happened with this movie, like, I think it did okay, but it didn't do as well as Frankenstein. And I think Universal eventually lost the rights to the novel, so they had to pull it. So the the novel got remade again in 1963 by William Castle, but I don't think I've seen that version. You know what I mean? But that seems like something that'd be right up William Castle's alley. Like he that. did all those kind of like cheesy like movies from yeah. you know with, with all those ones with Vincent Price like House on Haunted Hill, all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they did another one in 1963 that was the old Dark House, like another version of it. And I think Hammer had a uh, a hand in that one as well. But, but like I said, this one, this movie was lost for a long time, like because they had lost the rights to the novel. And I think it just kind of got, I don't know, stuffed in a shelf or something somewhere. And, uh, they didn't know where it was for a long time or they only had like parts of it or it was in bad condition. So they actually like found it later on. It kind of got shitty reviews at the time. I can see why. You know what I mean? The ending is not good enough for this movie that that needed to go out with a bang. They just yeah, I just a lot of it hang. I did kind of feel like it needed more of like it didn't have a clear end, a big ending. Yeah. Like the ending was just kind of like, eh. like that was it. Yeah, so this is what this movie's about because it was such a lot yeah. of cool buildup. Yeah. Like all these people like show up at this thing and there's all these fucking sketchy motherfuckers like in this yeah. house and you're like, what the hell is going on with these people? At least in the house of Usher, the house fucking fell down into the ground. Yeah, you know what I mean. And it was destroyed. So you had something to look at. And they're, you know, they were all, you know, being destroyed. In their own. But no, nothing really happens at the end. A fight happens, and somebody gets killed, and then the other guy gets locked up, and that's it. Yeah, like one. Well, yeah, like the one guy gets killed, and then the yeah. other guy, you think he's dead, but then he's just wounded, and then yeah. like he wakes up, and he's like, "Hey, I'm gonna marry the hooker." And oh, that's right, he didn't die. Yeah, he didn't, right. die. he didn't die. Yeah, the cra the 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 crazy uh, pyromaniac. Yeah, died. Saul died. That's right. 
the little the little crazy midget little munchkin yeah but yeah i think he's the only one that died right i think so well I mean, no he didn't die they picked him up and took him back to his room i thought they said he was dead i don't think so well okay maybe, maybe, i got yeah, i got the plot synopsis maybe, maybe right here maybe you, maybe you did i got the plot synopsis yeah he died he died he did die okay they just took his body up there because I guess they were just okay. going to stick it up there and figure out what to do with it later. Let it rock. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess so. Might as well. Like, yeah. the house was just in, like, fucking shitty ass condition. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, so... Oh, and I should say, too, like, when we were talking about, like, the whole, like, coded queer thing is the the last name of the family is Fem. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. Another thing that was weird is that the, uh, the crazy power maniac guy's name was Saul. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, I think in the Old Testament, wasn't uh, Saul and David? Yeah, well, they, he brings this uh, that up in the movie, like the biblical. Yeah, there's like Saul and reference. David. There he, was, ta- he has like a big like monologue about that's it. That's like hom- that was like a homosexual relationship in the in, yeah. in, in the Bible in the Old Testament. So yeah, they brought it up. Yeah, so that's what they're talking about. Definitely. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Yeah. It's like it seems a lot more overt in this one. I don't know. It was pretty overt in Bride of Frankenstein too, I guess. But in this one, it just seemed like there was more of that going on. Yeah. Mango says the William Castle version is not very good. It's more like a slapstick comedy, which this one kind of is. But I kind of feel like the humor in this one, there's a little bit of kind of slapsticky stuff. But this one is kind of more like, I don't know, like the dialogue and like is kind of like witty. So I kind of feel like it's more of that. But it does have a little bit of a slapstick. There should have been about it. another 20 minutes of this movie that had needed to have a proper ending. You know? Yeah, I would have yeah. liked for there to have been... Like I said, yeah. I haven't read the book, so I don't know like how the book is resolved. I would have liked for them to... Well, one, I would have liked for there to be to, like, more of a battle, like with Saul. Yeah. Like, maybe he could have escaped earlier. Like, I don't know. He escaped pretty early, I guess. Like, and you had the 100-year-old guy up there. that They left that was they left that hanging. And like I said, he didn't seem like a bad guy. No. Like, he seemed like a, a perfectly nice person. Yeah. Like, he didn't seem like some degenerate or anything. No. He was just like an old man in bed. He's like, yeah, this is kind of cool and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, like, yeah, he was just seemed like, like a nice you. man. You know, like, <laughs> we used to party here. Yeah, yeah, we party. <laughs> We're partying. That's all he talked about. Yeah. yeah. I think it would have been yeah. it would have been scarier if like some of the cuz I mean the Boris Karloff character, he was like the scariest character. And he wasn't scary to me. And he wasn't all that Yeah, yeah well that, that's what I'm yeah. that's the point that I'm yeah. making is that not everybody like I guess this was just supposed to be a comedy mostly. Yeah. But it did have horror elements. But like I said it's not supernatural. It's basically just kind of like like you said, it's like Fall of the House of Usher. I thought it was going to be a haunted house movie, but it wasn't. It's really not. Yeah. It's really not. It's not haunted house. It would have been better if it was, if it had if it had been a haunted house movie. If yeah, if there that would have been cool if it yeah. had been a ghost. If there had been too. ghosts and stuff, and yeah, and that would. Have, but okay. like I said, I think the original book was more supposed to be like a comedy of manners type yeah. thing, like kind of poking fun of at the English class system. Okay. So I think that's maybe what they were going for with it. And then it just had a little bit of like a haunted house thing. But the house isn't haunted necessarily. It's because it's not supernatural. Uh, Slash Fred also said in the other Alfred Hitchcock classic, Rope, there were some implications that the two killers were homosexual as well. Yeah, that I wonder, if, was that based on particular murderers? I haven't seen Rope in a really, really long time. That's the one that's like entirely in one room. You know, have Actually, you ever seen it? It's no. good. Um, Slash Fred also said on the show Sesame Street there were some implications that Bert and Ernie were gay. I always thought they were when I was a kid. It never like occurred to me that they weren't. They stepped, they stepped in two different beds, but they were side to side, side by side. I always thought they were brothers. They don't look alike. That well, I guess they kind of look alike. Yeah, I just because you know, <laughs> as far as like puppets go. Yeah, because when I was a little kid, you know, but all the puppets looked like that, so they didn't really have like a family resemblance because all the puppets looked like that. Yeah, I just thought they were brothers. Really? Yeah. Well, my friends Jimmy and Mike were brothers. They slept in the same bed. They said bed, same bedroom. They were in yeah, bunk beds. a lot, a lot of brothers. Said. Yeah, so they were they were on bu- in buck beds. There was only a couple. Years well, yeah. Later. When I mean when I was. Little when me and my brother yeah. were little, I slept in the, a bunk bed in my little brother. Yeah, bed. so like I, I just thought four. they were they were brothers. I thought they were little kids. They're supposed to be kind of like little kids. They were living like little kids. They had their own house though. They didn't have parents. Well, it's never really brought up. That's true. Yeah, you know I mean, maybe they did have parents. You just you know. Yeah, I was. I it occurred to me. I always thought they were adults. 
Well, at least Bert seems like an adult. Ernie doesn't like seem when like you're an watching, adult. <laughs> when you're watching Peanuts, they they very very rarely ever deal with adults. Except the yeah, teacher. But the teacher just wah, 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 wah. Well, their parents sound like that too. Yeah, wah, but wah, wah, the, wah. but you're yeah. aware that they have parents and teachers yeah. that there are adults in their world. It's just they're just not important. I didn't think about it because they were fucking puppets, Jenny. I knew where they were fucking puppets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not well, worried about the well, fucking I know biology that. of puppets I and how that. they reproduce and. Well, I wasn't worried about it either. It's just it didn't occur to me. Yeah, that I they... knew there were hands in there. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh my god, yeah. that's like really, really. Funny. Jenny's fucking trying to be all Spock with me. Why? You know, why was I trying to why, be Spock? You know, being logical about about what do you know? What I'm talking about trying to rationalize puppets. I was just a little kid. I wasn't trying to rationalize them. I didn't, you know, whether or not they had parents. Never even fucking crossed my mind whether they had parents or not. I just thought they were kids. Well, I know? thought they were. Thought they were like brothers. I mean, I just thought they were adults. Yeah. I, it didn't. I, I like it. Never occurred to me that they were children. That I'm they mostly were like worried my about age. Oscar. I liked Oscar more than any. You know, I liked. Oscar, o- I liked Oscar. Yeah, Oscar too. fucking come up out of there and make my day. That one in that Snuffleupagus. Oh, I yeah, I yeah. also like Snuffleupagus. Yeah. I yeah. also like Snuffleupagus. Yeah. But I mean, Oscar was clearly the best. Yeah. Because he was just such a curmudgeon. Shock, talking shit the whole time. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, that's he's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like all hanging out and being like disgusting yeah. and stuff. Yeah, I was yeah. into that. I, do, I have to admit I liked Grover as well. Yeah. Grover, Grover. Grover was pretty cool. No, man, we need to stop talking about this. Super, <laughs> Super Grover. Mega said Oscar rocked. Yeah. Hugo said, they're brothers. Don't kill my childhood, Jenny. Yeah, I thought they were brothers. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, baby. Yeah, Leopold and Loeb. That's who I was thinking of. I think I think that's who the killers in Rope were modeled off of. That's who I was thinking of. So yeah, probably. All right. So you are you ready to yeah. to close it out? All right. Yep. So um so yeah, old dark house. Uh, if you like Universal movie, it's a little bit weird for a Universal movie because it's not like monsters and it's not supernatural, but it was pretty influential and it's kind of funny. So it's like you might and it's got like an all star cast, like there's all kind of super famous people in it. So it's you know it's fun until the end. It's a, that's really the only thing I did. Disappointing like. end. I yeah. just thought the end was like a little bit fizzled out. But other yeah. than that, I thought it was really cool and I thought like the cinematography and everything like that was really awesome. I think it was the same cinematographer as. Frankenstein also, if I'm not mistaken. So, but yeah, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if it's on Shutter anymore, but it's, um, it's on Tubi, like, for free. So you can watch it on there. So tomorrow night is our big main show. And I'm sure Zach will be very happy to find out that we're going to be talking about movies that were total shit shows behind the scenes. So... We'll have some fun stuff to talk about. It'll be super fun. So hopefully you guys can all uh, come here for that. So thanks for dropping by. Thanks for super chats. And we'll see you guys again tomorrow night. Bye.